Hi, I'm Angie. I want to welcome you to National Indoor RV Centers, where we specialize in the sales, storage, service, and detailing of only high-end, new, and used coaches. So basically, we do it all. Hi, I'm Angie with National Indoor RV Centers, and today I'm thrilled to show you the 2021 Integra Riata. Now, the Riata is Beautiful coach, this is the Red Sea exterior, and Integra uses only the best paints. They use Sickens paints, which you'll see on a lot of high-end automobiles. They also use the Diamond Shield across the whole front cap to protect that beautiful paint job. And one of the things I love about Integra is they, they've got their name backlit right here across the front, makes this cap beautiful. I like it because you can see the coach coming and going, just looks really nice. The Riata has the Cummins B6.7 turbocharged 360 horsepower diesel engine with 800 foot-pounds of torque. It sits on the Spartan K1 raised rail chassis. So you're gonna have a really nice ride to this coach and it has independent front suspension. So this is the Integra's entry-level diesel coach. I promise you it's not gonna feel entry-level at all by the time I'm finished showing you all the features that you get with this Riata. So the Riata comes standard with the chrome exterior mirrors, which I think just look beautiful. Also, they are heated and internally controlled. They also have a camera right in that mirror. That's what's gonna give you that shot, the full length of the coach when you turn on your left or right signals. You'll be able to see all the way down the full length of the coach which gives you a lot of peace of mind as you're changing lanes or getting ready to turn. Another thing that comes standard this year in the Riata is a 360 camera. Yep. So entry level coach with a 360 camera, that bird's eye view, really cool. So you'll, as I walk around, I'll point out the different cameras. If you look up right in the center, right above the windshield, there's your first camera. And then I'll kind of point them, them, the rest of them out as we go along. So we have our first marker light for the passenger side. We have our first docking light. Those docking lights are super important, especially when you're going to a campground at night. They're gonna light up that area around the base of your coach so you can see if you're gonna hit a curb, a rock, picnic table, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully you're not that close to a picnic table. <laughs> um, then you've got your code system here. So that's really nice. I like to be able to get into my coach. I like to be able to send, you know, if it's the grandkids over, friends over, you can give them the code to your coach and they're able to get in without having the key. So you're gonna have a key and your unique code that you can get into your coach. Then if you look up, we have the dual pane tinted frameless windows throughout the coach. This will be our carefree awning and I'll demonstrate that for you in just a little bit. Down here, we've got our uh, 275 Michelin tires. So that's huge that they're putting Michelin tires on an entry level coach. Um, that's gonna provide you with a nicer ride and just peace of mind because they're, they're good tires. Also something that I want to um, have you go and check out is my video on Retroband. So Retroband is a spare within your tire. And I will explain all that in the video, but basically if you really want peace of mind when you're driving a big Class A diesel coach, you want to have that spare within your tire in case you ever have a blowout for some reason, it's gonna give you that protection that you need. All right, so let's check out some of the storage that we get in the Riata. First of all, this is a big, huge compartment. You'll notice that it's uh, lined with carpet, just like you would see in the automotive industry. And this is heated. Your storage bays are heated, so you're not gonna have to worry about freezing. We also have two 110 outlets right here in the storage bay, which is really nice. And then just over here, we've got our quick connect. So if you wanna air up um, your tires, if you want to air up a baseball, football, this is where you do it. If you want to see how you can use your quick connect, and use your diesel engine to air up your tires, I demonstrate that in my RVing 101 Part 2 series, Hitting the Road, so go and check that out. Now, the next thing is another standard that they gave us in 2021, and that is the pass-through tray. So that's really nice. That's typically something you wouldn't see. So we've got our pass-through tray. And this is our uh, vacuum kit. So that's really nice. You can access that from either side of the coach, passenger or driver's side. And then we have another storage compartment. Now inside here, there's several things right inside here. All right, so there's lots of wires and stuff behind this panel. That gives you easy access to this. This is kind of your breaker for, 
for the power, breaker box for the power in your coach. So that all these wires come in and interface with your FireFi system. This is where your um, chassis and house batteries tie together. You've got your high amp breakers here. And then just straight back from there, here is the disconnect for your house batteries. Your house batteries are right behind here. They are two L16 AGM batteries. So basically they don't need service. They're good for about five years and um, you can access them if you unscrew this panel right here. Now up above in the chassis rails here is your 2000 watt inverter. And they put it there. It's nice that they put it there because you don't have to worry about packing too much stuff around it. I know that we like to use these storage bays and really fill them up and the inverter needs a little air to breathe. So that's why they put it up there in between the chassis rails. I also want to point out that there's lights in the baggage compartments. Now I can turn them on and off here, or I can just keep them all on and then use the switch just inside the door and turn them all on and off at the same time. So that's typically what I do is just leave them on, turn them off at the door, turn them all on. All right, so one of the things you're going to love is that you got the Vega Touch in the Riata and you can just download the Mira app to your phone and then you're able to do everything on the Vega Touch that you can do inside the coach you can do here on your phone outside. So this is kind of fun, especially if you've got the grandkids around, you can have the awning magically come out and go back in <laughs> anyway. But I'm gonna demonstrate. So I've, da I've downloaded the app. I'm gonna go ahead and extend my entry door awning. And now my patio awning. Also right here for my app, I can do the lights. So I just go to my exterior lights and go to my awning and I can turn them on or off. And you can also adjust where the light's um, hitting. So if you want it on the coach, if you want it more on the ground, you can do that by extending and retracting your um, patio awning. So I'm just going to extend that a little bit further or retract that a little bit and it changes where that hits. Also inside the app, you can control your lights. So your awning lights, your porch light, and your cargo lights. So you can just simply turn them on and off right there, super easy. So now that we've got the awning ex extended, it's time for us to throw a party and we need a little TV. So here we have our 39 inch LED TV. What I love about this is that you can extend it so depending on where the sun is hitting you can even tilt it down and that's probably the best feature because you can move it around but that tilt down will keep that glare of the sun off your tv and makes it so that you can use it which is really nice you also have two 110 outlets inside this cabinet here and then just beyond here, we have the exhaust for our furnace. Now on the 39T2, which is what this floor plan is, we'll have two exhausts for our furnace. So I'll show you the other one on the driver's side. So last year for 2020, the key, if you wanted to walk up to a coach and know if it was a 2020, it was the chrome handle at the entry door. So for 2021, now you just walk up and if there's a kitchen window, you know it's a 20, at least a 2021. So that's a huge new feature that they've given us this year. That's gonna give you nice airflow inside the coach, especially if you're out in the mountains and you want that fresh mountain air to come in. You're just going to love it. And just to the left of the kitchen window, up above in the red paint there, you're gonna see the second of our 360 cameras. All right, for our next compartment, we have behind this black panel is our 100 gallon fresh water tank. Now, this is kind of a, a fabric that Velcro would stick to. So I've seen a lot of my customers um, hang their like extension cords or shirt hose. They use Velcro and they hang them on the front of this panel. So it's just another way to use this space, even though it's not a real, you know, usable space. They, they figure out a way to, to make it uh, usable. And then we've got, this is our um, potable water fill right here. So say you were dry camping and you wanted to put some water into your fresh water tank, or if you want to disinfect your tank, this is where you would do it. Next, we have our second LED marker light and our docking light for the passenger side, second docking light. Then just above here, we've got our window. And we wanna, I wanna show you how you use that window awning so you just get your little tool that's in your storage compartment 
and feed it through. Then you're gonna pull that out. Super easy to do. And go ahead and hook it right there. And this is actually really sturdy because you have a three point uh, hold on your window awning. So those are one of the things that I would feel comfortable if I knew it was gonna be a nice day. Maybe there'd be a little slight wind. I'd feel comfortable, comfortable leaving my coach and leaving that window lawn awning out. Here's another nice storage compartment. And then we move back into our chassis batteries. So they have been relocated in 2021 to make it easier to get to the tops of the batteries. So they're down below now. Then we've got our power control center. This is gonna have all the fuses for the back end of the coach. And then we have our power disconnects for our chassis batteries right here. So if we're not lucky enough to have you as one of our storage customers at one of our locations, where you're always plugged into 50 amp service. If you're storing your coach, you wanna make sure you disconnect your house and your chassis battery so that you don't have any parasitic draw. Here's the air dryer for your engine. Typically you wanna make sure that you change that filter once a year. And then these are the two fuel filters for the engine. And just above our, bat our chassis battery compartment, we have the exhaust for our dryer, which is in our master bathroom. And then we have our last of our marker lights for the passenger side of the coach. And then coming around the back here, once you notice that you've got a mud flap below here, Spartan's given us a safe haul tow. So this is your airline for your tow vehicle. And we've got a 10,000 pound hitch. So that means that you're gonna be able to easily tow your, your 4,000 pound Jeep, your Chevy Suburban, your jet skis, whatever it is, but with 10,000 pounds, you should be set. And then you've got your seven way for your brake lights. And then over here is the exhaust for your engine. Now let's get into the compart engine compartment here. So you just pull that up and out. Now the Riata has a rear radiator. What's important with that is that you keep this clean. If you don't, it's gonna affect the power that you have with your coach. So all you have to do is get the garden hose, not a power washer, you don't want that much power, just a garden hose, put your thumb over the end of it and just spray that off occasionally to keep that clean. Now inside here, we have our hydraulic oil fill here. That is for our um, power steering fluid. Then we have our engine oil fill and our dipstick, our engine coolant, and you've got the little tab there so you can see that it's full and check that. And then you've got our transmission fluid fill and check, and our engine air minder. And then notice right above at the very top in the center of the rear cap is our third 360 camera. So as I come around the driver's side of the coach, wanna point out first thing, our marker light. Then here we have our second exhaust for our furnace. And just above that is our 10 gallon water heater, which is gas and electric. And you can see the little glass area here that you can see inside to see if your pilot light is lit. Then in here, we've got our Sure Guard transfer switch and our 50 amp Shore power cord. So that's gonna go right in here. And we have uh, two 110 outlets. This is the plug-in for our engine heater, engine block heater. And then we have our cable TV input. And then we have nice storage here Obviously, this is where our 50 amp shore power cord is gonna go when we're in transit mode, but nice storage for when you're camping, you can put stuff in there that you're not using. And you're gonna see that this 50 amp shore power cord fits nicely through this kind of rubber grommet area here. That's gonna keep all the critters outside your coach while you're plugged in. You can shut your door easily, and this is gonna be nicely enclosed and safe. And here, we've got our 10 gallon DEF tank. So DEF is diesel exhaust fluid. Now you've got to have that for your emissions. And one of the things I wanna let you know is that DEF does go old. So there's usually the shelf life is about a year old. So if you know you're going to a camp and say that you're staying at the resort for six months, you don't wanna go ahead and fill that. So, you know, just kind of monitor that. And there is an expiration on DEF. All right, so we've got our first docking light on the driver's side, our second marker light, and then right behind here is our wet bay. So this is 
nicely lit. Again, you can do it right here at the wet bay or just leave it on and then use your app or the Vega Touch inside to turn all of your cargo lights on or off. So here's the little tool that we use to change our water filter. Here is our tank flush valve and our fresh water connection here. Macerator on and off. This is the SantaCon macerator that comes standard in the Riata. We have our wastewater holding tank here for our gray, gray tank and then our sewage holding tank here for our black tank. We can turn our water pump on right here. And this is the fill for the fresh water tank. So you can ha um, hook it up to city or just have it the fill for fresh water. Then we've got our external shower, which I love. We have a hot and a cold and we have a nice, you know, spray there for, it's not just kind of a wussy um, shower head. It's actually gonna give us some pressure when we use that. And then our water filter for the coach. Now, if you wanna see how everything is hooked up, go to my RV 101 part three and part four. I hook everything up and then in part four, I taking camp down and I disconnect everything and you can see how I do that in detail. And again, we have the rubber here so that when we hook up our um, hose, our garden hose to our city water connection, we can thread that through here. And again, keep this nice and sealed tight. No critters are going to, going to get into our coach. All right, so we have our fourth camera that contributes to the 360 camera. And then we have our pass-through storage compartment. This is the one without the pass-through tray. We've got the uh, Dirt Devil cleaning system here. And then if you look just up here, we have our camera system. That's where all the four different cameras come together to give us that 360 view that we get inside the coach. And we have two 110 outlets just behind the Dirt Devil system here. And here we have our pass-through tray. So again, we, in, we can access this tray from both the passenger and the driver's side of the coach. And you can see that it extends really far. So that just makes it really easy to get all of our goods that we have stored. Here is our 13 gallon propane tank. So this is for our water heater and our furnace. You also see our little connectors for our window awnings here and here. And then we have, this is, our, this is our hydraulic system for our equalizer leveling jacks. And you can see there's a reservoir just right behind here um, for the oil. If we need to fill it, we can do it right there. Here's our fuel fill for our 100 gallon diesel fuel tank. And then just below that, our docking light, second docking light for the driver's side of the coach. Then we have the exhaust for our 8,000 watt Onan generator. And in here we've got, we can turn on a little light Here's the fuse box for um, everything that kind of happens on the front end of the coach. This is nicely labeled here. And then, then we've got the T-bar here that we just have to pull so that we can go and open our front cap. Our final marker light for the driver's side of the coach. So a little trick here, you just use your toe. So easy. <laughs> you can pull this forward so that you can see what's under the front cap here. So. We've got our windshield wiper fluid here. Just below that, we have what I call the wussy horn. Um, then we've got our 8,000 watt Onan generator. And this is where you would flip that breaker if you did happen to trip it while you were um, going down the road or while you were camping. Here we have the Dash AC air compressor fan. And then behind that, we have our air horn. I usually typically like to have that air horn on because I want people to know I'm coming if, I, if I'm blowing my horn, I want them to hear me and get out of my way. Um, also, before I leave the front of the cap, you just gotta check out that windshield. That is what's so great about RVing. Your trip starts the minute you sit in that driver's seat and hit the road because that's your motion picture movie screen of this beautiful country that we get to live in. All right, so now we get to head on in and see the beautiful interior of the 2021 Riata. Before I do that, I wanna show you something new that they've added for 2021. So it's with our screen door. So typically as you're going down the road, the co-pilot, um, part of their view is through this door, through the window here. If they don't wanna look through the screen, now Integra has made that really easy. You can see these little tabs on your screen. Right here, right here, right there, and right there. So you just merely turn those, 
take the screen out and then the co-pilot doesn't have to look through that screen anymore or if they want to keep that in and that makes it really nice when you're camping so you have that more airflow into your coach. All right, before I head in, I wanna show you one more cool feature that Integra's given us. That's this little drawer in the step well. It's not very deep, but this is great for pet leashes, keys, muddy shoes, umbrellas, stuff like that. So I just like that you have that option. Now let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. As I walk in the door, I love that you've got the nice grab bars, one on the outside, and then you've got this one on the inside when you're leaving the coach, and this one as you're coming in. It's really nice, just a great safety feature. Then over here, we've got a lot of controls that are super important. We're gonna start from like the bottom up here because we've got our main power switch here. So if I wanna turn off all the power when I leave my coach, I can just hit that button right there, turn everything off, turn it back on when I come back to the coach. Then I've got my step power button. Once I'm camping, I don't want that step to go in and out every time I open my door, so we're gonna flip that switch. Then we've got our step light, which is, is another safety feature so that you can see where you're walking in the stairwell here. Keep that on. So then I have my master light off and my master light on. So that's great as I'm entering the coach, I can just hit all the lights on or all the lights off. And then I've got the button here that I can extend and retract my patio awning. So you can do that from the app on your phone, from the Vega Touch, or right here at the door. And then I've got the cargo light. I can turn on the cargo lights right here. My awning light. My porch light. And then my main ceiling light. Anytime that you see the arrows on the main ceiling light, up and down, that means that that light is dimmable. So I, I hold that down, it will dim, and then I can bring it all the way back to full brightness as well. So now to my favorite part of every coach, the living room, the interior, isn't this a lovely coach? So first of all, notice we've got the porcelain tile floor. Again, this is an entry level coach. It doesn't feel entry level to me at all. Flex steel furniture, and the wood is a stonewall gray wood with the Manhattan style cabinetry. So I think that's really um, pretty, a little bit more contemporary and just looks really beautiful. So check out all that storage that we have right here in the living room. So those are nice and deep. And then as I come back here, we've got more storage. More storage. We also have four 110 outlets in this cabinet. Now, if you watch my RVing 101 video, uh, part one, I show my customers and they have some ideas for how you can make this uh, space useful. So go ahead and check that out. More storage here. Another big storage area and again, four 110 outlets. So you really get a lot of storage in the front of this coach. Now this is just your on and off button for your wine guard razor uh, over the air antenna. And then if you just look right here, this is where you can direct that antenna so that you get the best signal. So we, as we come into the living room, we've got more storage and these are adjustable shelves. So I always like that. You can put books or whatever in there, just customize it for your own needs. Then up here, we've got, this is our Traveler's um, HD satellite, which comes uh, standard in the Riata. So that means you can get an HD signal. You'll be able to get more stations rather than an in-motion. But if you want to add an in-motion, you've got the input port for it there in the back and the import for the fold down dish to sat receiver. And then you've got an HDMI input there as well. And we have two 110 outlets. We've got our sound bar and another big storage compartment here. And our DVD player, Blu-ray. And then this is our matrix box. So we can select which input. If we wanna go from you know, the satellite dish HD or if we wanna watch a DVD or if we want to plug in an Xbox or PlayStation, we can pick which TV we put that on. If you've got two satellite dishes, you can be watching one program in the living room 
and your partner can be watching another program in the bedroom. So that's where you can do that. And then we have another adjustable shelf here. This is the pump for the extra bed that I'll show you in a minute how we're gonna do that. So you can see we have this nice big window that you can open, you've got the screens on it. We also have the day screen and the night screen. And then this is where our TV is hidden. So you just hit the TV lift button and there's your nice big 50 inch Insignia TV. While I'm sitting here, here's the button for the TV lift, the two 110 outlets and two USB outlets. And this outlet is probably what I'm gonna use for the air pump when I blow up the mattress that's underneath this sofa. So we have several sleeping options in the Riata 39T2 floor plan. First of all, we're gonna have a mattress under here. I'm gonna show you how that works. We also have the theater seating, which for me, <laughs> they're so comfortable, I could sleep right there. And then we've got a sleeping area in the booth as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this makes into a bed. There's a little tab there you've got to push forward and then this just easily pulls right out. You can see we've got our seat belts and then you just lift up this. That easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the pump and air up the mattress. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug my pump in. And then I just lift that top little lid there. And this just threads on, screws on. And I start filling up the mattress. So you can see that makes a nice firm bed. It doesn't look as nice as it could because I've got the plastic on there, but in consideration of the future owner, I want to leave that as you know intact as it can be so that they know that it's brand new. And so great queen size mattress here. So now I wanna let the air out. So I'm just going to press this tab and let the air blow out. I'm even gonna kind of start to fold that forward just to kind of force that air out of the mattress. So we optioned in the theater seating. These are one of the things that I love. They are very comfortable. Again, this is flex steel furniture, and then we've got the power controls. So you can just do it for TV or, you know, for sleeping, like I said, <laughs> I could totally sleep in this. So it's very comfy. We've got our drink holders on both ends and right inside the dial where you have your power, uh, foot rest and recline, there's a USB port. And then we've got a little storage here so you can put your TV remotes here. I love that you can tuck those away. And you also have another um, two USB ports in here where you can charge devices. So there are a lot of seat belts in this coach. You've got one in each of the theater seats. You've got two in the sofa, two in the forward facing booth and two in the rear facing booth. So you've got eight seat belts 10 seat belts total for this coach. Then right underneath the overhead cabinet here, we have the light switch for those lights. And then we've got two 110 outlets here, two 110 outlets there. And we've got our emergency exit window. And then notice the beautiful sconces. This is the Onyx interior. I think they've done a lovely job. Nice neutral color coach that you can pretty much put any coach, any color with and make it your own. Then as we move over here to the booth dinette, I'm gonna show you how that makes into a bed. It's super easy. And again, two seat belts here, two seat belts there. And then check out that nice big window that you get. So notice a nice big table that you get with this booth dinette. That's really nice because you can actually get four plates plus some other food items on the table. Um, great for dinners and for playing cards, all that good stuff. Then the booth has a few other things that are really nice. First of all, there's storage on the booth. And I'll show you that as I get it ready to make the bed and show you how easy that is. So as I go to make this into a bed, you can see how big the storage is underneath the booth seat. And then we've got the two 110 outlets here. 
So that's going to give us more space or no, more area to charge our devices. And then I'm just going to remove this cushion here. Do the same thing. You'll see that we have another big storage area on this side. Now that I've got both seat cushions moved up, I just lift the table, pull it out, push it down and back. There is our base for our bed. I'm going to go ahead and get our extra cushion that Integra has provided for us. Put that in place. And there you go. Nice, comfy bed for a couple of kids. We also have some nice storage right above the dinette. So three big doors and no bar in between. So you can get some longer things, maybe some cookie sheets and stuff like that are a little bit bigger. You can stick those in there. And just below, we've got the light for our dinette. All right, so now we're all the happiness is made in the kitchen, right? <laughs> so check out the amount of storage we have. Nice, big, tall cabinet. So you could get a coffee maker in there, Instapot. I really like that that is so tall. Another thing that's really cool about this kitchen is that you have little spice racks on either side of your, again, 2021 feature, the kitchen window. So I really like they've given you that. And then you've got the day and nightshade again. And this window again just opens really easily. And you've got the screen or you can open it so that you can hand food items to people outside. Kind of handy. So I really love the amount of cooking surface area you have in this floor plan. And you even get the extra pullout countertop. And then check out the drawers. Those were really nice and smooth. Then we have our drawers below the sink here. Check out how much space we have here. What I really love is that you can get a full like 13 gallon waste um, can in there. And then you still have all that extra space. So that's really nice. And we have our sink covers. And then we have the one big stainless steel sink with the residential faucets. Very beautiful and nice. We have the Insignia convection microwave oven and our Furion induction cooktop. So that's all electric. And then we have this nice big drawer. We've got some of the trays from our convection microwave oven in here. I always like to put those away when we're going down the road because they can tend to rattle sometimes in here. So it's nice to have that. Then check out that pantry. Love that we have the pull out shelves. That way it's very easy. I can use that whole area. I can get to everything in the back as easily as I can in the front. And then before I move back into the refrigerator, we've got our dustpan here. So we can just sweep everything over to this edge. Hit that and it will suck everything away. Then we've got our two 110 outlets here. And just around the corner, we have our central vac connection and then our carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. Across from that, we have our Whirlpool refrigerator and freezer. One of the things I love about this, it's a side-by-side -side unit, but get your you have your ice and your water in the door. This is nice and big. And Integra provides just a really easy lock. So that's gonna lock both your refrigerator and the freezer. All right, so we have three air vents for the coach. So we have the kitchen, the stool room, and the master bathroom. So you just open the vent here, and then you can control the um, fan speed either here with this dial or at the Vega touch and you can make it an exhaust fan or you can have it be an intake fan. So on the Riata we get the Vega touch which is really cool because you can control just about everything on the coach from right here from this screen. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the Vega touch on the Riata. All right so we're in the home screen right now so I can lock and unlock the front door and I can turn the master light on and off. It's also going to give me the level readings for my fresh gray, black, and LP tank. Then I can turn on my water pump from here. I can turn on my water heater, the gas, and the electric. 
So I'm going to hit both of those if I want to heat that water up real quick. Then we've got the temperature reading for the rear, mid, and front of the coach. It's also going to give me my battery, my house batteries, and my chassis batteries reading. And I can start and stop my generator here. My AGS is disabled. That's my auto gen start. And I'll go more into that on the next screen. So this is my electrical screen. So again, it's going to give me the reading for my house and my chassis batteries. Start and stop my generator from here. The inverter is in pass-through mode. So that means that the power is passing through that right now because we are plugged into 50 amp uh, service. Now, if I go ahead and hit disabled, when it's on pass-through mode, if I lose power, the inverter will start working. And then if I have it in the disabled mode, it will not turn on if I lose power. So I'm gonna keep it in pass-through. Then we've got our auto gen start disabled. I can change that right there. My charger, I'm gonna float charge. So I've just, my batteries are, you know, almost topped off. We're just floating them and I'm almost to a full charge here. The triggers for my AGS are either low voltage or um, heat. So it's either heat or cooling. So I've set those. If it gets too hot, they may trigger it to come on or if it gets too cold, it may trigger it to come on. And then this is my incoming amps to the coach right now is at 31. My charge rate is zero. Now I can go to my AGS. This is where I would, you know, customize my setting for my auto gen start. So I'm going to have it start or go on if it goes below 12 volts. The runtime, the minimum runtime is at least uh, 15 minutes. Then we've got our triggers again, our generator hours. It shows us that right there. Time at start volts, 60 seconds. Max generator runtime is two, 720 minutes. Then we've got our quiet time starts. So that's at 10 p.m. Of course, I want to do that because I don't want my generator coming on at night in a campground. You know, I want to keep my neighbors happy. Um, it will stop when it gets to 13.5 volts. It will try to restart for five times and it will wait 40 seconds in between those five times. And then my quiet time stops at 8 a.m. and my time at stop volts is 120 minutes. So now I'm gonna go back to my, and this is my inverter charger setting page here. Then I'm gonna go to my lights. So I've got my bedroom ceiling lights. Again, if I have those arrows up and down, I can dim those lights. My overhead bed lights, living room ceiling lights, dimmable, living room accent lights, dimmable, driver's side sofa, dimmable, my awning lights, can turn them on and off from here, my porch light on and off from here. And again, I can do this also from my app on my phone. My bath ceiling lights, stool ceiling lights, kitchen, dinette, passenger side sofa, and my cargo lights. Then this is our settings for our AC and heat. So I can just go ahead, if I were to hit cool here, I'd be turning on my air conditioner, turn on my heat pump, my furnace, and I can have it in auto mode like I have it in right now. Then these are the controls for our fans. So we have one in our kitchen, in our bathroom, the master bathroom, and in our stool room. So we can do, we can direct that to be an exhaust or an intake. And so I just turn those on and then I can hit those fans for what I need. Now this is the control for our slides. So this is where I can extend and retract my slides. I like that they're color coded. So I can easily see this is the passenger side. This is the driver's side. This is the bed slide. And then we have the bed tilt. We can do that here from this panel or there's a manual one in by the bed. And we can do our patio on awnings and our entry awnings. And then we go to settings. This is where I can pair my mobile app to my phone, which I did earlier. I can control the brightness of my screen. My entry switch, the floor plan. This is really an Integra floor plan because we are in the 39T2. Temperature, Fahrenheit or Celsius. And I can set the, um, the clock on the Vega Touch. Go into cleaning mode so I can wipe this down without touching any of the controls. So it's really easy and you're going to love the Vega Touch. So a couple things I want to mention before I move on. First of all, in the 39 
T2, you get three AC units. So on any unit that's over 37 feet, you're gonna get the three AC units standard with heat pumps. And you also get the Wi-Fi extender standard and it's prepped for solar standard. All right, let's go check out the half bathroom. So we have a nice size half bathroom here. We have the Thetford toilet with the push pedal control flush. We'll look at the nice solid surface area, a lot of area here. So we have the light switch where we can turn on the vent or the fan. We just have to open it. And then we have the two 110 outlets. We have the towel bar or towel ring, which I love that we have a spot for that. And then our nice big window. And then we have huge medicine cabinet. The control panel that's listed on the door there is behind the panel that you would just unscrew those if you needed access to it. So a lot of folks end up making this the his and her bathrooms or her and his. I would go the other way. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's nice because this really can be a full bath. We've got storage here, solid surface countertop with residential faucet and integrated sink. Now to the beautiful master bedroom. So we have the king size bed and we have a nightstand on each side. At the base of each bed, we have uh, two 110 outlets and two USB charging ports. So you can you know, put your CPAP machine up here if you need it, charge your cell phones, your iPads, whatever it is. Now, right underneath the bed, this is the button for the bed lift. So when the slides are fully in, you do have to lift the bed, but it's also nice if you're just watching TV, if you wanna just lift that up a little bit, it's really nice. You can do this from your iPad, the Vega Touch, or right here. Then we've got our push button reading lights, and those are direct, you can direct those wherever you'd like. And then you've got three stages on, dim, and bright. We've got the windows on each side of the bed. So if you're in a, you know, the mountains, you want to have fresh air at night, so lovely. You can open up both those windows and have a nice cross breeze through here. And again, there you've got the manual day and night shades. Now the bed lifts up and you have a lot of storage under here. So check out all that storage. You think that possibly with the bed lift, you might lose some of that, but you really don't. Right underneath the overhead cabinets above the bed, we have the switch for our reading lights and the switch for our ceiling lights. And we have the lock and unlock button for our entry door. That's really nice, because how many times do you lay in bed, all of a sudden wonder if you've locked the front door? You can do it right here from your bed. Then we've got the nice privacy door here, and then let's go to our storage and our wardrobe. So nice big wardrobe with adjustable shelves. You can take that out if you want to have more hanging space there. And then you've got nice deep, full length drawers. So much storage. Then we have our nice, you know, dresser area here with our TV, which is on the lift. So we have a nice big window behind that. We've got the two 110 outlets, our TV lift button here, and then our ceiling lights and our reading and bed and lights right there. Then we have our AV drawer here. So we have our Sony Blu-ray player and more big drawers. Another big wardrobe. Again, with adjustable shelves or take them out if you need more hanging area. And then two big drawers. And we've got the breaker box for the coach here. And another breaker box and fuses right here. So we have a small step up into the master bathroom. We've got the one piece shower, which is nice and roomy. We've got the little seat here too, which I love for us ladies that need to shave our legs. And then we've got the, we can have this as stationary or we can use the handheld shower head. And then we've got the Aquaview shower miser this year. So that's new for 2021. Basically what that does, you turn this knob here when you go to get in the shower. Now, a lot of times we waste a lot of water just getting that shower warm because who wants to 
take a cold shower. I don't. So you're using water from your freshwater tank and then you're filling up your gray tank unnecessarily. And if you're like me, that's the first thing that gets full is my gray tank. And that's why I have to go dump the coach. So anyway, this is a great feature. You turn this knot, this lever here, when this lights up, kind of like a mood ring, <laughs> then you know the water's warm, go ahead and take your shower. It's a great feature, you will love it. And then we go into the vanity area here. So we have a huge medicine cabinet. Look at all that space, nice and deep, plenty of room there. And then we have a second medicine cabinet. Now check this out. Look at those pull out drawers. So that would be fairly hard to get to but they've made it really easy. So I have a lot of space there, a lot of storage. And then this is probably one of my favorite. Look at that compartment. It's all right here in front of me. So easy to get to. They've made that just really accessible. I love the backsplash, the backlight here, lots of counter space, two 110 outlets, towel ring here, and then check out this space below. Very roomy, lots of storage area, plenty of room for all of your stuff in this bathroom. And then behind this sliding door here, we've got our Whirlpool washer and dryer. Now, if you happen to come back into your coach and you smell an awful odor, a lot of people think that something's, you know, gone wrong with their gray tank, their black tank. Um, a lot of times it's just that you don't have any water in your pee trap. So just like your, you know, bathtub or sink at home, you've got to put water in there. So just take a gallon jug of water, pour it into your washing machine, turn it on a rinse cycle. It's going to fill up that pee truck and you're going to get rid of that smell. Now we have our toilet here and we've got three modes. So we've got the empty, the normal flush, and then the eco flush. And we have our second emergency exit window. And then I love something. I know it's simple, but a towel bar. I love to have a place so we can hang our towels. So I always like to show the coach with the slides retracted. So my slides are fully in. You can see that I can easily get into my refrigerator, freezer, also to the bathroom, no problem. And then look at all the space that we have in the kitchen area here. I could totally be making dinner, fixing sandwiches, whatever. People at the booth, sitting in the seats here, easy, easy to walk through. All right, so let's go over everything here at the cockpit in the Riata. First of all, to the left of me, I've got my battery boost. Now that's a super important button, uh, especially if you've been somewhere, say you're dry camping and you're not plugged in, um, come back to your coach and you can't get your coach to start. So you want to push that battery boost button. That's gonna tie your house and your chassis batteries together to hopefully give you enough boost that you can then start your generator run your generator for a minute, and then go ahead and start your engine. So definitely wanna keep that in your back pocket and it's, it's an important little button. Then we've got the slide pedal. So that's just gonna allow you to adjust where the pedal is for your comfort. Um, one of the things I love about the Riata is that there's a lot of room here. So the chair is very comfortable and has quite a few functions here. So you can go forward and backwards to get comfortable and then just straight up and down. And then this is gonna be the rear tilt forward or tilt back, and then the front tilt forward or tilt down. And then we've got the control, this for the reclining part of the chair here. And then right underneath that little flat right here is the lever that you would push if you wanted to go ahead and turn the captain's chair around once you aren't driving and you're at your uh, resort. So you would just, flip that little lever and do that. And you've got the same functions on your co captain chair as well. All right, so then we have our air horn. So if I have that off, just kind of a little regular, if I have it on, that's what I want <laughs> to have on when I'm driving because I want, if I need to stop, I need to get someone's attention, I want them to hear me coming. Um, then we've got our auxiliary brake. So this is uh, your, basically your engine brake for the coach and you, it's just on or off. I like to keep mine on, on all the time just because I have a little extra braking power, especially when you're going down um, a steep mountain, you're definitely gonna wanna have that on too. You only have to you know, push the brake half as hard and it's going to be doing the work for you. And then if you really put your foot on the brake, 
it, you're gonna have more braking power. Now, to this little dial here, that is super important because basically that's gonna give you all the information that you have on your dash. All right, so you can see, <laughs> I went really fast. I'm gonna go through all these little buttons so you can see the many options that you can control right from this dial here. So I'm gonna go into settings, press that, and go up to the very top here. So if I go to my TPMS, I can click that. This is gonna be the TPMS screen that's gonna give me lots of information. Now I can choose that I have no tow vehicle attached or I can choose that I am gonna have a tow vehicle. So I'd go ahead and hit enter and say yes. And then you can go down to tow type. So you can do a single axle trailer or you can do a double axle or a triple axle. If you keep going, then you're gonna to go to a tow vehicle, which is, that's where I'm gonna keep it. So I'll keep that so that I can see the PSI on those tires as well as the coach. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit there. Then I can go to nav zoom. So when my nav is on, I can pick the, the zoom level basically of my navigation system. Sound volume, so that's basically the alerts within the coach. So I have them at 65, I can go ahead and turn that up, keep it at 70 and just hit the center button to save that. Units, that's just gonna be temperature. Do you want Fahrenheit, Celsius? Keep it at Fahrenheit. Pressure, PSI, we wanna keep it there. Go back. Service reminder. So this is where you can set your own unique service reminder. Say you want to get your oil changed at 5,000 miles or whatever whatever you decide. It will alert you about um, 1,000, 1,500 miles before your actually service reminder that you set for yourself. But that's better than having it as a sticker on your windshield. It will actually alert you here through the dash depending on what you set it for and what interval. And then you can reset it. So diagnostics, that's just gonna give you engine codes. So that's really more for your technician, configuration for your technician. And then you can just go through your trip information. So trip one, and it's going to show you that you've got 300 miles left. Um, you're getting 8.9 miles per gallon. There's the fuel that you've used, your average speed. And then if you click that again, you'll go to trip two. And then if you click and hold, like I'm gonna do right now, it will reset it. So now I've reset trip two and I'll be ready to go. There is my PSI for the coach. And if I turn that knob, oh, if I push the knob and I go to temperature, go back to PSI. Now, if I just turn it, it's gonna show me my, my tow vehicle as well. And then this is one of those dials that you can customize. So I've got my exhaust temperature on there if I'm in the desert in the summer, I may want to watch this, but I can also press this and pick different information that I may want up there. My accelerator position, engine percentage load, boost, engine percentage torque. So you can pick, customize that screen. So one of the great new additions for 2021 is this digital dash. The 360 camera that you can see here, you can see everything that's going on around the coach. I love that for when you're going down the road and I'll show that when I'm driving, but I also love it when you're in a campground. You know, say it's you know at night or in the evening, you hear a sound outside, you can throw on your docking lights, turn on that camera and see what's around the coach. So I really like that option. My other favorite thing that you can do while you're driving, um, and I'll again demo this while we're going down the road, but you have to have the engine on, park brake released, and then if I want to go ahead, I'm just gonna hit this knob forward right here, just, and it's gonna go to my nav system, or I can go to my 360 camera, or I can go back to my gauges. So that's probably one of my favorite things for 2021, to have this digital dash, so easy to read. I can also control the brightness of this, and then I just can look forward so many controls right here at my fingertips and then everything I need to see is right in front of me or right in front of me through the windshield. All right, so now let's go to our driver shade. So that's just gonna be my day shade up front here and my night shade. And then I've got the same for the passenger. 
and the night for the passenger. Then we have our mirror defrost. So if it's cold, I'm just gonna turn that on so I'll defrost my mirrors. And then the control, internal control for those mirrors so I can adjust the top part of the mirror, the bottom part of the mirror. I do have to adjust that manually outside the coach. So I'll have someone sit here or I'll sit here, have the window open and just tell them to adjust that so I can see um, the rear part of my coach and kind of all the way down the, the side of the coach. So we have our toll window here, which I like to just because you can open that up. You can look outside. If you want just to have the screen open once you're camping, you can do that as well. So a couple of nice options with the window there. So we have the cup holder here for the driver's side to the left and to the right of the driver. So you've got two different cup holders, which is nice if you want to have coffee and a soda or, you know, energy drink, whatever it is, you've got two holders. Then right here, we've got our two USB ports and our 12 volt port. And then we're going to come up here. So we've got our headlights, marker lights, just turn those off, our fog lights, our accent lights, our docking lights, super important as we're going to a campground, and then our map lights. So those are just above me. You've got to have this button on if you want those map lights to turn on, and then you can, you know, dim them. They've kind of got three settings, dim, bright, and off. And then you can just leave those on auto as well. So now we have our equalizer uh, hydraulic leveling system. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how that would work. It's very easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the coach. I'm going to hit the power button and then I'm going to hit auto level. So as you're watching your leveling system, you may get these warning signs, low voltage, excess slope, ignition is on, engage the park brake. All these things, you, you know, if I didn't have the park brake on, I would have that alert come up. All right, all four lights are lit up. The beeping has stopped. We are level. So now I would just turn off the power and we are set and level. When I'm ready to leave the campground, I'm just gonna go ahead, turn the power on and hit the retract all button. All right, so let's go over everything here at the steering column. First of all, to your left, there's a lever and that's gonna allow you to adjust your steering column. And while I've got that up, you can see that that's my hazard button right here. So I just go ahead and pull that out for hazards and push it back in to turn them off. And then just push or pull the lever to adjust your steering column. And then we've got our answer. We can answer our phone call here, hang up a phone call here. We've got our cruise control, so turn it on here. You can set it resume or cancel and turn it off here we've got our windshield wipers so we can turn them to just turn them on and then if we want to customize the interval that the windshield wipers go we hit this button and count one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand now it's going to go at that interval. One 1,000, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, until I stop it. And then obviously this right here would be your windshield wiper fluid that you could put out. You also have the toggle controls on each side of the steering column. So here is going to be the volume for your radio. And this is the mode button. So this will allow you to scroll through then we have our seek button here so I can scan forward or backwards on my radio. And then this will take me to my navigation system. Anytime I want, I've got my 360 camera up there or my radio up there and I want my navigation system to come up, I just hit that button. It will scroll back and forth between those, but it always goes back to the nav system. Here we have our 3000 Allison transmission. So we can go into economy mode there Obvious, obviously, this is reverse, neutral, and drive. Push the plus and minus buttons together, and you can scroll through the information for your transmission. So trans oil level OK. Oil life 99%. Filters OK. Trans health OK. No codes. 
and then you go back to neutral. So this is an easy way to check the health basically of your transmission. Then everyone, we've got our big yellow parking brake right here. So we're gonna pull that to apply and push to release. All right, so right now we've got the screen up for our radio. There's lots of other audio and visual options like your nav system. So I'm just gonna go to my main menu here and then I'm gonna use my paddle to scroll through radio, media center, XM radio, Bluetooth. I can hook up my phone so that I can call and make connection, you know, from my steering column. Go back to my menu. HDMI, if I wanna hook in a video here. Then I'm gonna go to my camera. Now, this is one that I really love. This is our 360 view, so that's huge. That's another new thing for 2021. And then when I touch the screen, I can go, I can pick different views. So we're in the building here at National Indoor RV Centers in Surprise, Arizona. So we're not getting the greatest shots, but well, that's kind of a great shot of our building, isn't it? <laughs> this is our storage location where we store um, over 300 coaches indoors, always plugged in to 50 amp service. So you can split the screen. My favorite view, you have all four here, but my favorite view is the bird's eye view. So I like to see all the way around my coach and then my rear view. So go back to our menu. And then we can go to our nav system. So you can put in your address, whatever you need from right here food, gas, all those options, just like you would on your you know, regular navigation system on your phone or in your car. And then settings, that's just where you can customize this screen um, and what it will do for you. Now we've got our 12 volt receptacle here, a HDMI receptacle and USB. We can start and stop our generator. So this is great if you're going down the road, it's starting to get warm, you've got um, passengers in the back of the coach and you want them to have some AC, you're going to have to go ahead and start your generator so you can turn on the air conditioning in the back of the coach. We've got our control here for our AC and heat, cold and hot, and then our fan level here. Now we've got the drink holder that I pointed out for the driver and passenger, a little place for your keys or miscellane miscellaneous items, maybe your cell phone. And we've got this little drawer here which I think is nice and it's very secure, it's not going to rattle around. And then just around the corner here, I have the two 110 outlets, and I have two 110 outlets over here, just to the left of the driver, left and behind of the driver. All right, so here at the passenger's chair, I wanna go over a few things on the right. Here, I've got my day and my night shades, so I can put those down and up for the day, down and up for the night. And probably one of the most important buttons once you're traveling is the step slide cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that out. That's just gonna protect me from falling into the stairwell or kids or a pet. So that's really nice. And then I've got my two USB charging ports, another drink holder here for the passenger, place where I can set my cell phone. And then just behind it, I've got two 110 outlets. Now on the chair itself, I wanna get ready to be in travel mode. So luckily I've got these nice controls. I can move it forward or backwards and then forward tilt down, forward tilt up, and then rear tilt down or up. And over here on the right hand side, I've got the adjustment for the back of the chair. And then also I have the same lever that I had on the captain's chair that when I push, I'll be able to rotate this chair and turn it around into the living room once we're camping. All right, so we're getting ready to head out in the Riata to see how this handles on the road. A couple of things I want you to think about before you leave is first of all, I like to go ahead and get my screen sort of set up. So I put my navigation up on my screen here and then I went ahead and put my 360 camera on the dash right in front of me. Remember, I, that's really easy. I can just toggle through my gauges. I could have my nav system up there, but I like it big over to the right. And then I like to have my 360 camera up in front here. So before we get started, I also want to talk a little bit about driving a Class A diesel. Since this is an entry level coach for Integra, this may be the first time you're ever driving a Class A diesel. I remember when I was first learning, I was a little bit nervous. Um, I drove around our building in Texas probably like 
25 times. I'm sure the technicians wondered what the heck I was doing, but it was you know, not the greatest weather. I was a little nervous to go out on the road and I was able to practice my turns. So turning's a big thing when you're driving a Class A diesel because now your tires are not out in front of you like they are in your car. They are actually behind you. So your turning point is the center of your front axle. So basically at your rear end, that's kind of what you want to think about. So you don't start your turn until you, the middle of your front axle is at the turn. So you're going to put your nose out further than you're comfortable doing initially, and then you start that turn. You can also have these great mirrors so I can wa watch my rear tires from both the mirrors. So if I feel like I'm going to hit the curb or go over the curb, I can stop adjust and miss that curb. So really when you're first learning and driving the Class A diesel, the key is take your time. We're not in a hurry. We're RVing. Part of the experience is just taking the time, enjoying the scenery and not worrying about, you know, being in a rush. The only time you're going to get in trouble is when you're in a hurry. So I'm leaving National Indoor RV Centers here in Surprise, Arizona, and let's take this out for a test drive. So I'm just going to pull out here. Again, get my middle of that front axle at the turn. I've got my signal light on and I am going to just slowly take that turn because I'm looking out for everything. I can see my back tires. I'm going to, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to get into my lane here and we're going to go. So other things that you want to watch out for while you're driving, tree limbs. Those trees can be super expensive, I'm telling you. You wanna make sure they don't scratch your beautiful paint job. You wanna protect that at all costs. So if you have to, slow down, stop, wait till you have the lane, or you can go out into the other lane so you can miss that. That's super important. And another thing I learned when I was first driving is hug the left side of the lane that you are driving in. Don't always stay in the left lane because you'll make people upset but hug the left side of the lane that you're driving in because everything bad usually happens to the right. Poor road conditions, street signs, um, debris, whatever. So I always like to hug that left side of the lane. You're gonna be great. You feel like you don't fit in the lane when you first start driving a Class A diesel. You totally do. And they are so much fun to drive. You're really going to love it. So come out to National Indoor RV Centers Give it a draw, come out and take a test drive with us. We love to have you and we think it's really important that you drive whatever you're going to buy. All right, so I'm gonna make a right-hand turn. I've got my signal on. You can see that I can see down the full length of the right side of my coach now. I'm gonna wait for it to be clear. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go and remember your turning point. So put your nose out there further than you think you need to. Watch your rear tires and you are good to go. All right, so I'm gonna get up to speed here. The speed limit's at 45 miles per hour, so I'm gonna get up to speed, and then I'm gonna set my cruise control. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. It's one of the things I really like about the coaches. When just using the cruise control, I may not even get up fully to 45 miles per hour here on this road, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, and then I'm going to set it for 40 miles per hour here, and set, and now, it really is just on cruise. It's easy. Look at the beautiful surroundings. I'm out here in the desert in the spring. I don't know that if, you, if it gets any prettier. Um, that's one of the things I love about RVing. It's just such a great way to see our country and its beauty and take your time and be in your own home, safe, your own pillow, your own bed. It's really the most sanitary and safe way to travel. So. Come and get an RV from National Indoor RV Centers and start enjoying this country with your family. Now, also, this is a really quiet ride. So the Riata has independent front suspension. I'm on the Spartan K1 chassis, and you can see this is smooth, quiet, and very enjoyable. 64.2, that is super quiet, but honestly, lit, listen, I mean, it is so quiet, so nice. You're not gonna have a problem carrying on a conversation. It's as quiet or it's, it's as quiet as a car. So you're really going to enjoy driving and riding in the Riata. At National Indoor RV Centers, we take in trades, we do consignments. So don't feel like if you have a coach that maybe you're even a little upside down and that you aren't able to buy something new or upgrade to um, something different. 
give us a call at National Indoor RV Centers. We'll work with you on your trade. Um, you can consign your coach. We are happy to help you however we can. We provide financing. Um, we do it all basically. So we make it really easy and we promise that it's gonna be a pleasant experience. We would love to see you, love to have you come out and see what National Indoor V Centers is all about and all that we do, service, paint and body, storage, and obviously sales. We wanna take care of you, our customers. So come and visit us. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of the Integra Riata 2021. Now I'm sure you're wondering how much this gorgeous coach would cost you. So MSRP is 322, 958. MAP pricing, which is minimum advertised pricing, is 242, 219. If you wanna find out what I can sell you this coach for, please give me a call at 469-277-1120, or you can go to our website, nirvc.com, or you can email Angie at nirvc.com. Lots of options, right? <laughs> so just remember that at National Indoor RV Centers, with our volume and economies of scale, RVs simply cost less. So make sure you give us a call. Also, go and check out my RVing 101 series, our retro band video, our AIM Club rallies. They are lots of fun. It's our all-inclusive motorhome club, and we have a great time with our customers. We'd love to have you join the NIRVC family. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.